over the bailer. Uh, the bailer then compresses the A or straw that has been cut into bales to facilitate easy and easy handling, that is for us to handle it easily. A bales could be could be in rectangular or round uh, forms, just as we can see uh, in the picture here. And then we have the combined harvester. Uh, the combined harvester is more of a is a complex machine that combines different activity in the, of harvesting and then processing also. It's a type of implement or machine that are moved into the field where they are operated to harvest, thresh the crop, we know, and then place the grains in a bulk tank or in a sack. That is, it combines a lot of activity uh, into one machine. A lot of activities are being combined by one machine and the machine carries it out effectively. The various operational parts are, and function of the combined harvesters are one, uh, which is the quarter reel which cuts the standing crops. Then we have the second component is uh, the hogger and the feed conveyor which collects and uh, feeds the crops into the threshing drum. And then the third component is uh, the drum and the concave and the concave, which stretches the grain from the stalk or stem. Then we have the fourth component, uh, which is which separates the grain from the straw. You see that we are having series of operation. Then the fifth component is uh, the dressing fan and sieve, which we know uh, or clean the grain by separating it from the chaff. And then the sixth component is a conveyor or elevator which conveys or moves the grain from the combined harvester to the bulk tank. Then other types of harvesters that we are having is the root harvester, the tuba harvester, and then the stem harvester. Then the next implement that we will be looking at here is a sprayer. Just as you can see here, these are implements designed to spray chemical in various farm operations, just like uh, uh, we might use it to spray uh, fertilizer or herbicide or insecticide also. In large farms, a sprayer may be mounted on a tractor or aircraft, while in small farms, unoperated sprayers are used, for example, the, nap the knapsack sprayer. A knapsack sprayer is made up of a 10 to 15 liter plastic or galvanized tank, a pump lever, a pressure dish, a flexible delivery pipe, a spray gun and then the nozzle and a pair of carrying belts that is just as we can see in the diagram here and then what are the precautions while using uh, sprayers uh, you have to wear your protective clothing that which includes the face mask a mask the gloves and then boots you have to put on your boots then the second precaution is that do not eat or drink during operation because uh, if you eat or drink during operation, it might be contaminated and that will affect your system. Uh, your digestive system will affect your body. Then, spray in the, in the direction of the wind. Do not spray in, a, in the opposite direction of the wind because it's, the wind might blow uh, the chemicals towards you. Then, do not spray in the field uh, if the field is too wet. And then, the last one is that you wash your body after each operation. And the wind, which uh, prevents contamination and which might affect uh, your body, that is, affect your operator. Then, what are the maintenance uh, being carried out uh, while uh, maintenance being carried out while using sprayers? The first maintenance is that you rinse and wash equipment after use. Then, two, you unscrew guns and lancets and rinse it properly. Then, the third maintenance is that you clean nozzles, ensuring that there are not there, there, there are no blockages. That is, you make sure that there are no blockages in the line uh, of the nozzles. And then the fourth maintenance practice is that you turn uh, the containers, especially the tanks, upside down after use or cleaning. Uh, then we now go to the maintenance of farm implements, just as what we are having here. And uh, the first maintenance is that you, you use the right implement for the right operation. Then two, you tighten loose bolts and knots. The third maintenance of farm implement is that you ensure proper alignment of disc or shear or shear bottoms. 
before operation. That is, you have to make sure that the disk alignment is uh, in the proper direction and then the shear buttons are functional and uh, the, the alignment are in the, in the right angle. Then the fourth maintenance is that you ensure complete, complete coupling of all the points before operation. You make sure that your uh, implement is coupled in the correct uh, way and it is uh, coupled if uh, it is coupled very well, that is, it's not that the one that you, you coupled maybe two of the points, if it is three points each, and then you couple the three, two points, and the third one you didn't couple it well, uh, that means you are not carrying out the, uh, an effective maintenance. And then uh, you, you store implements on that shell, that you don't leave them under the sun or in the rain. You store them under shell so as to prevent rusting of their parts. Then the six uh, maintenance is that you check hydraulic unit before operation where applicable. Then the sixth one is that you clean and grease moving parts, uh, while the last one is that you paint necessary parts or panels so as to prevent rusting. The next subtopic we'll be dealing with is uh, agricultural mechanization. What is agricultural mechanization? Agricultural mechanization is the application of engineering principles and technology in agricultural production production, storage, and processing. Agricultural mechanization can be employed in land preparation, uh, which involves the clearing and then and the, the tillage operation. And then uh, agricultural mechanization can also be employed in planting, fertilizer application, weeding, crop harvesting, uh, unit operation, respectively. It can also be employed in the rearing, feeding of animals, harvesting of animals and processing and storage of animal produce. That is, agricultural mechanization can be employed in the production, uh, process, uh, production, harvesting, processing, storage of agricultural produce in general. Then, what are the advantages of agricultural mechanization? Well, the first uh, advantage is that it reduces health hazard. And once it's reduced, health hazard is going to reduce drudgery because it's going to make our uh, work less tedious. And then it's, it saves labor. That is, uh, just like now, if uh, we are to uh, actually uh, till a land or reach uh, maybe an hectare of land, uh, if we are to do it manually, it might be, we, we, and, uh, and the operation is to be carried out. Uh, on time, that is, we might be in need of if we are to use two, a day to reach a plot, an hectare of land, we might be we might be in need of maybe twenty to thirty uh, human being, that is, abled men. But if we are to make use of uh, agricultural mechanization, we just need two or three, maximum of three people, the tractor driver and two assistants, and the hectare of land will be reached or tilled within uh, it's just a matter of hours it will be done which means we've saved labor then the stabilize of operation just as we know that agricultural production has to do with time it is seasonal then the fifth one uh, advantage of agricultural mechanization is that it aids and encourages commercial farming that is we can produce at large scale then the sixth advantage is that it increases output. Then the seventh is that it promotes our specialization of labor, just like what we have. We have the agricultural engineers, we have the plant and animal genetic scientists, then we have the bio system engineers. And then the last one is that it also promotes cooperation among farmers because it makes the farmers to come together and put their resources together so that they can, um, once they come together, they can easily procure uh, uh, the needed machinery. But if there is no need of buying machinery, that is, the farmers might just uh, stay on their own since they can afford to buy uh, cutlasses and then their home. But it is much difficult for a farmer to say that I can buy, uh, I have money to buy a tractor. So uh, if farmers are to come together, it will improve the unity among amidst them. Then what are the disadvantages of agricultural mechanization? The first disadvantage is that the high cost of establishment. 
and the cost of maintenance is also high. Then the third one is that the displacement, the displacement of workers on the farm. The fourth one, it causes environmental pollution, just like the release of uh, carbon monoxide uh, from the unburnt fuel uh, of the tractor or the prime movers. Then the fifth one is a uh, compaction of soil. Uh, just as we know that all these uh, tractors uh, are heavy, and once they move on the soil, they tend to compact the soil. Then after the soil has been compacted, there will be the structure of the soil structure. Uh, these are the disadvantages of uh, soil uh, agricultural mechanization. Then, what are the limitations of agricultural mechanization? Uh, factors limiting agricultural mechanization can be discussed under the following headings. Uh, the first one, we have the economic limitation, we have the technical limitation, and then we have the small farm holdings limitation. But we will be starting with the economic limitation. Most farmers are poor and cannot afford the machines are due to the economic, uh, uh, their economic life. They don't have much money on them uh, from which they can afford to buy maybe a tractor, a tractor, uh, my, if not subsidized, can be, can be sold at market price of about 10 million and above.